was organizing my boat today, taking everything out, getting ready to store everything for the winter time, organizing it all on the shelves. And I was thinking about the amount of stuff I have in my boat. And it's mind boggling how much stuff you end up with in the bass boat by the end of the season. When it really comes down to it, there are five things that I have tied on pretty much every tournament I go to. First, drop shot. I catch a ton of fish in a drop shot. My confidence bait. I know anywhere I go, any time of the season, if I can find a fish, I can get a need a drop shot. I had some really good finishes in tournaments this year on it. Uh, the Kobe collar on St. Lawrence. Had two six pounders up there on that this season. Uh, actually, back to back days, two six pounders. Caught a ton of fish on it. Candlewood finished third place there. I think I was second in St. Lawrence with it. Caught a bunch of fish on my local lakes with it. Uh, but honestly, I got tired of fishing it. It's my go to. I use it all the time. I just wanted to do some different things this year. So I'm kind of going to walk you through my five baits that I have on all the time and how I use them. If it's a newer lake to me, I don't know what the fish are doing. I'm trying to break it down. It's gonna start with moving baits, spinner bait, and then also I throw a wobblehead jig, the dirty jigs wobblehead, with the adrenaline crawl on the back, and I swim it like you would a swim jig, just barely ticking the tops of the rocks. I can cover a lot of ground with it. Just going down the bank, chucking and winding, chucking and winding, ticking the tops of the rocks. Good thing about that is they get a lot of big bites and when you stick them on that jig hook rarely do i lose them they almost always stay pinned had a lot of good luck with that this year and even lay downs i can pitch lay downs with that because with that ewg hook you texas rigged that on there really comes through wood well doesn't come through weeds grapes at a football head but does a great job through wood you can throw that into a lay down just bump it down through the logs catch a lot of fish doing that also other thing I have all the time on that same route power worm, seven and a half inch power worm Texas rigged depending on the depth I'm fishing I vary the weight three sixteenths quarter three eighths if I need to uh, fish that a lot in the laydowns fish that a lot in the grass a lot of bigger bites on that also when I need to get a good fish you know I have a limit in the boat on a drop shot if I'm looking for the bigger fish, go to those. The other one I also fish is a finesse jig. I have a ton of football head jigs. I throw them a lot, but honestly, looking back on this season, caught more fish on the small finesse jig than I have on the football head jig. I like to throw the max scent bait on to give it some scent. Now these are too big for a finesse jig, so I cut them down with the scissors. I cut about four or five of the ribs off. And I also cut down the sides and I thin them out. I'll take one out for you here. If I take a scissors and I cut them off right in here so that they lay nice on that jig if you cut off a bit. And then you can also thin the sides out if need be. You don't really need to, but you can thin those sides out a little bit. Gives it a real nice profile and these have a real strong scent. When you're just dragging out on the bottom slow, I think that scent makes a difference. They pick it up and they hold on to it longer. If you don't feel them, they're going to hold on to it long enough that hopefully you recognize they're there. There's been times where I'm dragging on the bottom, dragging on the bottom, and it just hits that spongy feel. And that's, they hung on to it long enough for me to feel them. I never felt them eat it, but I just felt that extra weight and then you're able to get that fish. Uh, same thing with the drop shot. I love the max scent for the drop shot because they hold on to it. The bigger fish, you tend not to feel them hit it. You either don't feel the weight on the bottom or you feel a little bit of extra weight and then you just lift up and you'll feel that rod load and then that's when you know they're there. Um, football jig with the trailer on it when you're swimming at and they hit it, you'll know it. That one they really seem to come after and they hit it hard. Um, power worm, same thing. I like to have that scent. Fishing lay downs and stuff with that. I've had some really good luck with the seven inch. Every once in a while I go to the eight and a half inch it stays on the hook better and doesn't tear as easy as I throw a super line hook with that. Um, I think I have some over here. Yeah, these are the super line hooks. A little bit heavier shank to it, a little bit thicker. 
helps when you're setting the hook in lay downs. When you're in a lay down, you set the hook on a good fish, it's a three, it's a four pounder, and you hit them hard in that lay down, you can't let that fish turn and start to bulldog you. You have to hit them hard enough to get their head turned towards you and don't even give them a chance to turn around. Keep that head turned towards you. If you can, get the head out of the water and just winch them out of that lay down. Once they're out of lay down, you can play them a little bit easier. But I found that super line hook does a really well, really good job for me in those lay downs. The standard hook was working for me, but there was a couple times I landed fish, I looked at the hook and it started to open up and I didn't want to take a chance with it. So I went to the super line hook. It does tear the worm a lot more on a hook set. So that sometimes the eight and a half will hold up longer than the seven inch because it's a little bit thicker worm, but I tend to get more bites on the seven inch. So it just depends on where you're at. I'm up north here. So I don't have the size of a large mouth that you do in the south. You know, here, good fish is a four, an excellent fish is a five. Some places you can get some bigger fish up here, but most of the time, you know, we're in those three pound to four pounds, a good large mouth for us. But all in all, I mean, those are the five I had on all season. Did really well on all of those baits. Uh, like I said, I mean, searching, throwing that. A dirty jigs wobble head and just covering some water once you start to realize what the fish are doing if they're eating bait fish and you can find a key area then i'm going to pick up the drop shot i'm going to milk that area with the drop shot if i'm swimming this along and i get some bites on it but they're not committing to it or i think there's more fish in that area and they're not hitting then i can flip to the finesse jig and drag it with a trailer and pick up those couple bites on the fish that were after that crawl style profile. And then the power worm, if I'm in grass, I'm throwing that all day in the grass. I've had some really good tournaments on that in the grass. You can even throw this on a power shot rig, rig a heavier drop shot, weedless hook on there. You know, I'll put an EWG style hook on. You can put that same hook on a drop shot, throw it on a bait caster with a heavy weight on the bottom punch grass with it works really well give it a shot guys uh, hopefully that helps you out a little bit simple easy strategy five baits those are the five i'd keep on my boat all the time i wouldn't take them off uh, the rest of the baits if i forgot them wouldn't wouldn't bother me at all and those five i keep with me all the time